So this morning, a pretty shocking piece of news was revealed to us on the internet via Nintendo's Twitter, where they confirmed that Charles Martinet, who has long voiced Mario in Super Mario video games, is officially moving on from voicing the character. Now, to me, this is interesting for a few reasons. One, simply because it's happening in the first place, and two, because of the reactions. And I think that some sadness would be a normal reaction that most of us would expect because it's been 25 years that he's been voicing the character. And while he's not speaking complex dialogue in any of the Mario games, we're all pretty familiar with and comfortable with his delivery of the wahoos and the yahoos and the mamma mias and all of that stuff that it's, you know, we've been experiencing for, like I said, over two decades. But beyond the sadness and beyond the more standard congratulations being bestowed upon him for his great body of work, there's also been some other kind of unique reactions and it's really just been a range of things that I myself in the couple of hours since this has been announced has seen from some folks as far as how they feel about this and it's most of it isn't negative, there's a little bit of negative, but it's mostly just, like I said, a wide range of emotions, which I find kind of strange, because I feel like there's only a few obvious ways that most people should feel about this. This isn't really bad news, as far as I can see, so I don't really understand some of the more kind of negative reactions that I've seen, but... Anyway, I mostly just want to talk about what's happened and, and the fact that he's leaving the role and the great job he's done, and then discuss some of the other weird internet stuff a little. So it started with a tweet from Nintendo of America where they said this, we have a message for fans of the Mushroom Kingdom, please take a look, and then they followed up with this image of text that reads, Charles Martinet has been the original voice of Mario in Nintendo games for a long time, as far back as Super Mario 64. Charles is now moving into the brand new role of Mario Ambassador. With this transition, he will be stepping back from recording character voices for our games, but he'll continue to travel the world, sharing the joy of Mario and interacting with you all. It has been an honor working with Charles to help bring Mario to life for so many years, and we want to thank and celebrate him. Please keep an eye out for a special video message from Shigeru Miyamoto and Charles himself, which we will post at a future date. And beyond that, it's also worth noting and sharing that Charles himself shared a tweet in response to this. Very simple, he said, my new adventure begins. You're all number one in my heart, woohoo. And so that's great. It's very charming and it's very feel good to me. That's kind of my takeaway from all of this is that unless there's some nefarious secret thing going on behind the scenes that they're trying to keep under wraps because it's bad and they're forcing Charles out and there's friction behind the scenes, none of which I believe, by the way, but provided none of that's happening, I actually see this all as good stuff, and it's something that I'm actually very happy on behalf of Charles for, because it seems like he might be having a new opportunity to do something that maybe he wants to do more than just constantly record voices for these games. And so first and foremost, before jumping into some of the internet related stuff, I obviously do just wanna say thank you to Charles and congratulations on what seems to be and what I'm interpreting as a good positive move and a positive change for you and your career and hopefully something that you want to do and are excited to do. And so, again, thank you and congratulations, you know? I mean, Mario is one of the biggest, if maybe not the biggest and more, most important video game character in the history of gaming. And as you guys maybe know, I'm a pretty old man, and so I was a teenager when Mario 64 came out, which was the first time we really heard his voice in a video game. We're not counting the Super Mario Brothers Super Show, right? Or the live action, any of that stuff. You know, as far as a, a Mario character in a Mario video game, like they say here in their statement, Mario 64, 1996 on the Nintendo 64, I was 16 years old, and it was incredible to not only play this new beautiful 3D Mario game on a brand new next generation Nintendo console, but we did hear Mario talk, and it kind of kickstarted and created that template of the Wahoos and the Yahoos and the Mamma Mia's, like I said at the beginning here, it really started with that game and that version of Mario, and we know it was Charles himself who brought that to life for the first time and has been doing it ever since, not only for Mario, but for other characters in Mario and Nintendo games. Now, the one anecdote I can actually share as far as Charles Martinet goes, uh, I attended E3 in 2004, okay? It's come up a couple of times on the channel, and I have tweeted about it before as well. 
And, you know, that was a very fun, interesting, exciting time for gaming and for E3 specifically. This was during the sixth generation, right? GameCube, PlayStation 2, Xbox. Before social media, before really online gaming and the internet just kind of infected it. In my opinion, kind of ruined a lot of the fun of the gaming hobby, but it is what it is. And so because of that, things were much more secretive and news traveled very slowly. And at E3 2004, again, I'm so proud and happy that I was able to attend this year. It was a great monumental year. This was also the year that Nintendo was revealing to the world their newly announced Nintendo DS two-screen portable console that no one had seen. They were revealing it to the world officially at E3, and the way we on the show floor got to see the Nintendo DS for the first time was waiting in like a two-hour line that traveled the length of the entire huge Nintendo booth. And we waited in line, and they were bringing in people like 30 or 40 people at a time to go and see behind curtains and behind closed doors the Nintendo DS. I was 24 at the time, by the way, when this happened, or maybe I was 23 about to turn 24, because I think at the time E3 happened in May every year and not June, and so this would have been, well, both, both months are before my birthday. So I would have been 23, almost about to turn 24 when this happened. And so by the time we finally got to go in, they would bring, like I said, 20 or 30 people into this little room, and it was a little theater, and they would dim the lights, and this screen would turn on, and they would basically play what we would now see as like a YouTube trailer for like a brand new piece of hardware. Like Imagine like a Switch OLED trailer, but instead it was a 2004 version of like a little Nintendo pre-packaged PR video. And it would, they slowly revealed, they showed people and kids like playing something and you couldn't see what it was. And then eventually they show you what they're holding and it was the original model of the DS. And so that little three minute video shown in like a little kind of like theater room was the first time anyone got to see what the Nintendo DS looked like. And this was at E3. Again, it wasn't online. There were no smartphones. There was no Twitter and Facebook. And so we were very privileged to sit in that room and see it before press releases went out to the world world to show pictures of what the Nintendo DS looked like. And this relates to Charles Martinet. I'm making this a long story because I love reliving these memories. This relates to Charles Martinet because when the lights came on, Charles Martinet was standing there and they announced him to this small little room of like 30 of us. And it was me and my girlfriend at the time and our roommate at the time. And they announced him to us as this is Charles Martinet. He's the voice of Mario. And Charles was like, hey guys, good to meet you. This DS thing is pretty exciting and cool. And so now come through this next curtain and here is a room where you can spend 30 minutes playing on DS demo units. And he was shaking everyone's hand as we walked out of the theater into that behind second curtain sort of Nintendo DS demo room. And so anyway, again, a long story and a long tangent, but it was great to be able to shake his hand and be like, dude, great to meet you. I love you. I love Mario. And then I was just laser focused on going to play this brand new Nintendo DS thing that the world hadn't seen. And here I am, a 23 year old nerd with my girlfriend and my friend playing the Nintendo DS before anyone else could. It was incredibly cool. And he was very nice, very kind, and incredibly excited to share the DS with all of us. Anyway, so back to the actual news at hand. Thank you for sitting through my E3 2004 story, a 19-year-old anecdote from when I actually got to meet Charles Martinet himself. It was a great time, and so now we know he's moving on. And so to get to my feelings on this, which I, I know I already touched on here, I am reading this because I don't think there's any secret behind the scenes bad stuff or bad blood happening behind the scenes. And I, I want to believe this isn't Charles being forced out of the role. I think this is a probably a combination of a few things. I think it was time to move on. You know, he's in his late 60s, almost 70, I believe. There is a great chance that this is probably a combination of Charles's choice and Nintendo's choice. No one person can do one job forever. And a lot of people who are acting a little bit more on the negative side might not be thinking about the fact that, you know, voicing Mario is fun for us who are the fans that receive the final product of his work, but it is his job, okay? And even if you love your job, it's still work. It's still the thing you do. If you do the same job and the same thing, even if it's like an acting gig or whatever, for decades, 
you are bound to run out of interest or you are bound to want to change things up or do something different. Again, let alone at his age, it might be a little bit of a retirement situation. So what I think might be happening, and, you know, full acknowledgement, this is just speculation on my part, but I feel good about this speculation, even though it maybe is wrong. I think he probably is transitioning slowly from voicing Mario and Nintendo characters in video games to doing this cool ambassador role for maybe a couple of years. He gets to travel the world. He gets to represent Mario. We've got Mario Wonder coming out soon. By the way, there was a lot of speculation that he wasn't voicing Mario in Mario Wonder. And this seems to confirm that it's not him. And it also obviously confirms that he's moving on from the character anyway. So he gets to, you know, he's going to promote Mario Wonder. If there's any truth to the 3D next 3D Mario game coming out in, in the next year or two, maybe launching a Switch 2, for example. He probably gets to be a part of that for the press tours and all of that stuff. He gets to do that. He maybe gets to also shepherd his successor, the person or people that might be doing Mario roles voice-wise in the future. And maybe he'll do this for a few years before eventually just retiring altogether. You know, that's, again, speculation, but it certainly makes sense given his age, given how long he's been voicing the character, and the fact that Nintendo as a company, as a business, they probably also want to be preparing for the future. It's, it's better than being surprised one day Charles is like, I'm not doing it anymore, and then they're caught with their pants down. Or heaven forbid something happens to him health-wise if he was to go for the next five to ten years, and then they're caught with their pants down in that respect. I mean, to me, it just feels like a normal thing. It feels like a good thing, and I think it's something Charles himself wants to do. And so I just want to say and wrap this up by adding to anyone who's either mad about this or saying that this is an awful decision. How could you do this, Nintendo? Charles is the perfect guy. Why would you make him not Mario anymore? Yada yada. And there's been a few reactions like that I've seen. And I'm sure maybe you've seen a lot of that stuff out there as well. I think that is so misguided and crazy. Unless I will give the one caveat, okay? Just, just to be fair to the conversation. If we learn that something bad did happen and Charles didn't want this and Nintendo forced him out because there is bl bad blood behind the scenes, that would change the conversation, okay? But I don't think many of us think that's happening. So let's take it at face value and what it probably is, uh, a joint decision amongst all parties and a good thing for Charles himself. Because we mostly think that's what's happening, I think it's crazy to act so selfishly and to assume that it's the worst thing in the world and to be mad about it. Because it's not about that. It's about what's best for the man himself and what his choices are. To me, getting mad about it or saying it's a terrible decision by Nintendo is is thinking that Charles and Nintendo have an obligation to make him do this until he literally can't anymore, until he's on his deathbed in a hospital, which hopefully is like 20 years from now, you know? But that's like assuming that he has no right to make his own decision and that he always wants to do it and that he has to do it simply because you want him to do it and that Nintendo is crazy or evil for doing what they're doing because they're doing it to you. And again, that's why I think it almost could be a little bit of a selfish reaction. Let's just take it, like I said, at face value and just assume that he's just ready to move on, you know? That's my takeaway. That's my read on it. I don't think people should react upset or mad about this. Being sad or disappointed because you love him in the role and it's a shame he's not going to do it anymore, that's normal because you can have that feeling while also being happy for his next phase and the next step he's doing with his career. And if he does retire in the next handful of years, that's another thing to congratulate someone for. Just like when Reggie retired from Nintendo or anyone retires, that's an amazing achievement that not a lot of people get to do by their own choice. And so I'm, I'm beating a dead horse at the end here. I'll just say I'm happy for Charles. I'm glad to see what he's going to do in the future. I'm very thankful for what he did. Mario isn't a very complex character anyway, you guys. There's not a lot of dialogue to Mario in video games. And so I'm just happy to see what he's going to do in the future. And so this is what I think.